Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Let's Play Civilization 6. Just picking up more and more artifacts as per usual. This one did come from Alexander, didn't get a choice, and it was a classical artifact. So I think, if I remember correctly, I was... Ah, unfortunately, I have two classical artifacts from Alexander. That's a bit unfortunate. Well, actually... These are all classical artifacts as well, and none of them are Alexander. So if I were to just grab one of these and swap it, and then plug in this classical artifact as well, I can have two themed museums. Very nice. I have almost every single museum themed with the exception of these three, and this one is pretty close to being themed, and this one I believe is uh, not that close. I still need a bunch of industrial era artifacts. More railroad on the way down to the south. Now I was going to go ahead and do some science tech stealing, but I think it's totally fine to do a bit of great work stealing, just to hopefully cut into their culture gain. Now over here in Gnosis, I think it would be a good idea to start purchasing a few units. So I think I would like to pop this unit out of the city next turn and maybe start doing a bit of purchasing. Let's see if we can't convert Push Kaleshki. Ah! One Inquisitor charge didn't quite do the job. I'll save the other two for Taxilla and then maybe we'll come back here to see what we can do. All right, so we have unlocked Seaside Resort. So we do have access to aluminum. Let's do a little bit of a search for aluminum. We're also able to start building Seaside Resorts. That's going to be the next big project we get to work on. We have one source of aluminum over here. That's really not a whole lot of aluminum. Have I really hit almost none? Lisbon has a bit. That's genuinely amazing. There's almost no aluminum inside my empire. I have exactly one copy of it, which is a bit heartbreaking. I will be able to get two bombers out of that. Um, and since I did hit aluminum, we're gonna push for advanced flight so that we can actually build those bombers. Renaissance walls are finished here in Ispahan. Probably a good idea to throw down the old theater square. And you know, I think on this rice tile is a good spot. So I think I'll put it right there because then I can put a paradisa right here and that'll boost both of these um, seaside resorts that I intend to build. I could settle a city over here and there's actually some really nice coastline up here to the north that I could pick up for the purpose of building a few seaside resorts and I would really like to do that. Problem is finding a right spot to settle. I can only get three seaside resorts up here. I would have loved them to have uh, settled on the horses but we're going to want to get a few settlers in the late game just to pick up the last few coastal tiles that we can. Like for example if I were to settle here I could pick up a few seaside resorts along this coastline. In fact, I'm really, really tempted to work on a settler over here in Zranka to see if we can get that. It would take 10 turns, but I think it's a reasonable thing to do if we can get these settlers up. We'll get quite a few uh, seaside resort locations out of this. So that's not a bad move in my opinion. Renaissance walls done over here in Push Klavi. I could get a canal and stuff like that, but I would much rather work on the theater square. And I can't remember where we had planned to put the theater square here. I guess I could, if I wanted to, pop it in over here on this location. I don't get to take advantage of many of the Paradisa adjacency, but I do get a pretty reasonable theater square location. Renaissance walls on the way in Shizuoka. I definitely need some builders up here. Got a lot of tiles to improve. Railroads, railroads, railroads. All right, let's pop this musketman out and then start purchasing some units. So if we look around, we would like another failed cannon, we would like a musketman and all that sort of stuff. I would also like to get myself a biplane if I could, but I don't have any oil. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to wait until we have advanced flight. You know, it could be something to be said to get a couple of observation balloons and pepper this city from long range and use our field cannons in a defensive formation. So I tell you what, I'm gonna pick up a field cannon and an observation balloon. I can't actually remember if these guys are boosted by observation balloons. I'm just gonna hope that it does and that I didn't just waste my money. Anyway, let's combine this unit together. So now we've got a level five uh, field cannon. Oh, I guess I should have someone who resides in the city. I'll put you in there for now to stop the loyalty going so bad. Oh, you know what? I would actually like units to be really cheap to purchase with gold. 
I'll give it a go to see what happens. Maybe we can get it. It probably won't pass, but I'll give it a shot. And you know what? It actually passed. That's fantastic. It's kind of sad though, because I just spent a whole bunch of my money. But the good news is I'll be able to purchase units uh, just pretty much constantly in here. And it looks like the attack range of this guy did go up and we did get the shells promotion. So we'll be able to take advantage of that, no problem. Anyway, let's go ahead and start purchasing a few more of these bombards. They're only 475 production or 475 gold, that is insanity. If I could somehow get this encampment repaired, um, which I don't think I can with the current city setup because it has just like basically no production. But if somehow I could get it repaired, uh, we could do a lot of work. In fact, you know what I might do? I might just go ahead and purchase uh, some units to send through here. If I had a coastal city nearby, um, it would be amazing. Oh, you know what? I could get some frigates to send on the way. Now they do cost nitre, but frigates would do the job of uh, providing assistance on the coastal battle to maybe kill some of these units on like places like Ephesus we could definitely use some frigate armies and I suppose there's not really much else I'm going to be spending my money on you could make an argument for privateers but I think I'm going to go for at least frigates for now so now here comes the eternal question do we go for environmentalism or social media first and I think along the current path I'm going to go for social media first I would love to plug in military research now but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to it does go obsolete very soon Oh, you know what? I may as well take advantage of it as long as I can. So I tell you what, I'm going to pop out skyscrapers and pop in military research just to get that little bit of extra science. It's about 30 science per turn. If I, if I had had my walls pre-built, I would have got a lot more value out of it. But, you know, it is what it is. Right, let's go ahead and chop this tile. And that will finish uh, the lighthouse in here. I didn't mean to do that. I had meant for this city to take that tile. A uh, little bit of a... a minor suboptimal move but it'll work out just fine in the long run let's go ahead and place that holy site down and then finish off that in here um as much as i would love to build these things i think it's far more important that i start pumping out builders and i think i'm just going to queue up a whole host of builders in here and then i'm going to move liang over into back tree just so i get a couple of extra builder charges out of that city it's not super important but it's just a small little efficiency thing i plan to build a whole bunch of builders in here i'd love to build some of these other things don't get me wrong but um you know builders are just that important to me right now lovely 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 another oh i can't pillage these anymore that's right the world congress thing changed oh well we got a whole bunch of value out of that in the meantime just hopefully nothing too bad happens uh, anymore let's go ahead and convert this city excellent we fully converted this city i might pop back in here and see if i can convert push kalavati or however you say it right so how long until we declare the war with gorgo it looks like we're going to be declaring the war in two turns so i think it's time we go back to gaining sources with gorgo so that the war is a little bit easier uh the city's walls are still damaged hopefully they're still damaged by the time we actually get into the war um we're gonna be having a lot of work cut out for us though when it comes to war and we also managed to grab ourselves the taj mahal which gives us plus one error score from historic moments earned after this wonder if the moment is usually worth two or more error score it's not going to contribute a huge amount of error score but nicely it'll also generate us a little bit of tourism as time goes on because every wonder is worth a little bit of tourism trying to think out the potential placement of some pyrodeses it looks like if there's one here then one should go here and one should go here which means it'll probably be okay to put a uh, thing here. Yeah, I'll put the holy site right there. Although, was there another district that I maybe wanted to work on? I mean, a trade route would be great. Also, builders would be fantastic. So I think, again, over here, I'm going to prioritize getting a couple of builders. I'll get the spy first, because spies are actually really, really important. I'll get myself a spy in here. Hey, yeah, we got another great artist. It's probably about time that we start maybe considering that great works of art are worth something. Although, again, we are trying to wait for Mary Leakey, who... I tend to find comes right after Alfred Nobel. Although again, you know, that's sort of speculative and it's RNG based, so it's not 100% reliable. You can never ever rely on these things 100%. Let's keep getting frigates for the cheap price of almost nothing. And I tell you what, I'm gonna move you to there. I'm gonna pull back you with the Quirus here. I'm gonna have one of my field cannons on this tile, one of my field cannons on this tile, and then ideally I would have two bombards combined together. We've got two turns until the city flips and we can declare the war one turn from now, right? That'll work out pretty okay. Although I might wait until the city flips independent again before I uh, declare the war. Just wait that one extra turn. Railroads, railroads, railroads. Just trying to connect my cities up. Let's go ahead and pop back this way and see if we can convert that. 
We're up to 37 out of 324 tourists, so things are starting to go in the right direction. We just got a neighborhood over here in Aege. I would like to get the shopping mall, but I think, again, at this point, it's just really, really important. I can actually pick up the Petra here, which would be worth quite a bit of tourism, stuff like that. I'd also like to pick up the Bolshoi Theater, but I'm going to prioritize getting my hands on spies, builders, and all that sort of stuff. I'll grab a trader and a builder in here. Renaissance walls finished in Tushpa. Would love to build a neighborhood and all that sort of stuff. Let's just let's just keep let's keep on the builder train. Right now is the time of the builders because this is this is one of the points in the game where uh, one of the things I get the most value out of uh, or, or value from building right now are actually builders. And we'll also go ahead and build ourselves another bombard. And um, I can't remember if observation balloons. Yeah, they work if you're adjacent. So I only need one observation balloon. Pop you onto that hill. We're in position. Right, we've got a supporting lineup of units in position. We are going to have to kill all these field cannons, which is going to make my life a little bit difficult. But it should be just fine. Let's get these units uh, in position to retake Gnosis. And we'll get these frigates heading over as well. I love that the units are super cheap because I'm going to be able to spam them out with my really, really strong economy. Now, I am out of nighter now, which is a bit unfortunate. So I think we're going to go for some privateers as our backup unit. See if we can't convert the city. And there it is. We converted another city to our religion. We're going to be getting a little bit of our pressure pushing out now. The city is converting. Quite a few of my cities are converting nice and slowly. Um, I would like to save up the cash for another natural park over here. And I think I will because this will make a very nice natural park in the long run. Now, the one downside of going for these airplanes is that it will be delaying our Eiffel Tower timing, which is going to hurt our overall tourism. But that's not the end of the world because hopefully throughout this episode, so we'll start generating an awful lot of tourism from doing improvements with our builders. Now, this city did flip independent, which is going to require me to do a little bit of damage back to it. Right, so we retook the city. Now, the loyalty pressure in here is just going to get worse and worse every time it flips independent. So we are kind of running out of time and now we need to declare the war on uh, Greece next turn. So we'll get that war declared next turn and I will keep the city. Up here in Tiahidrahia, um, most things are going just fine. It could use a bit of housing. More importantly, it could use a bit of food, actually, if I'm looking at this city correctly. Uh, it's really, really, really lacking in the food. So I tell you what it could really use. It could use an aqueduct and a neighborhood for amenities. We'll get the aqueduct going first, though, because that's what's going to provide um, a bit of production to these industrial zones over here. Ferris wheel completed in Susa. We definitely want to get the aquarium. I'm not going to purchase it. I will hard build it. That'll give me a whole bunch of amenities in the local area. And I think the amenity problem that I've been having is at the very least getting a little bit better. Less of my cities are displeased and more of them are content and happy. And once I have this aquarium online, that'll hopefully fix at least a few of these cities. And if I can get a few more aquariums online, it'll be even better. Now, it does break my heart to rip up these farms after they've been there for so long. But, you know, the reality is these are just going to be better as seaside resorts. Congo wants to do a joint war on Wilhelmina. I'm going to skip out on that one. I'm going to see if I can convince Arabia to do a joint war on Corinth. Of course, the Netherlands denounces me, probably because I killed all those cities so many years ago. Anyway, let's talk to Arabia. Arabia, would you declare a joint war on Gorgo? Oh, we could do a liberation war. Now that's an interesting one. Let's have a look here. I think I'm going to do the Golden Age War. Surprise War is ideal for uh, Persia. But I mean, like, in reality, I don't need this plus two movement. What I really need is just cutting down the amount of grievances so that I can maintain positive relations with every other civilization in the game. So I tell you what we're going to do. We are going to be doing a Golden Age War so that I get the minimum amount of grievances possible. And then I'm going going to be calling to war Arabia. Let's go ahead and see if you want to join in that war. He'll join for nothing and that'll mean I'll do plus five combat damage against him or rather my units will have plus five combat strength against his units which is nice. I'm getting some from military alliance but none from gaining sources which is a bit uh, odd here. Anyway let's make sure that we take out these um, particularly troublesome units. This is the double shot unit right? Yeah, this is my double shot unit, so he can take him out. We'll take the shot there. Let's get this bombard scooched in here. Won't be able to do anything this turn, but next turn, it'll maybe be able to get a bit of damage in. Oh, I need a scout unit to actually spot the city 
to uh, do damage to it, which is a bit of an awkward spot to be in. But there we go. There's a significant, significant chunk of damage done. Not a huge amount. I feel like the game is lying to me here. This unit can very clearly walk these two tiles back to get to the city. I guess I just had to go a bit of an awkward way about it because there was that unit in the way. Robert Goddard. I'm trying to think now. There are great engineers that I don't want. The space race one isn't super important to me. I'm trying to find which ones I care about. Joseph Paxton is pretty nice. Joe Roebling. I think there's one. I have James Watt. I swear there's one who gives you tourism. Ah, there we go. Uh, Charles Correa is an information era great engineer. And Alvar Alto. So I want both of those guys. So I'm not sure if Alto has already appeared. But I think... You know what? I, th I think I'm going to claim him. Just because I'm pretty sure no one else is even close to getting to other great engineers. And I should be able to get, make my way up to Alvar Alto relatively quickly. Now, great merchants are another thing that I have neglected too much Damn it, I really wish I had built more commercial hubs this game. Normally I would, but I kind of just neglected them, forgetting that most of the really, really good tourism great people actually come from great merchants. For example, Giovanni de' Medici gives you the bank with two great work slots. We've also got Tata, who gives you campus, campuses tourism. You've got Ubuka that gives you um, industrial zone tourism. That one would be really, really nice to me. In fact, I think I'm going to prioritize getting commercial hubs up if I can. And uh, I, I don't think I will be able to, though, because my cities are kind of packed full of different stuff. Normally, I wouldn't go industrial zones in a culture victory. So I think that's part of it. Normally, I would have actually done um, commercial hubs. But I think the way that it's just worked out is the way that it worked out. Harvest this farm and we'll place a seaside resort on it next turn. Unfortunately, Antana de Revo has been turned against me again. So I'm gonna have to pump a few more envoys in there to steal it back. Kind of wasting that error score again because we already have like 228 out of the 143 needed. And I just don't want to have uh, enemy units running around inside my borders. What we're gonna have to do over here is see if we can save some of these bombards from all of these units uh, there's an awful lot of uh, danger on the board here so i'm going to pull you back for a little bit of a heal and see if i can't poke in a nice upgraded musketman to take up this front line spot and then use some of these guys wait i thought i so i need to prioritize what i kill i think the biggest threat to me right now is this thing right here the uh, level three unit so i'll kill that i'll pop this cuirassier swap uh he'll probably get killed but that's not the end of the world and then i will kill this guy as well i'll bring this frigate forward that i upgraded and take a shot there i don't have a whole lot of ranged units left but that's grand not worried about that i've got a privateer on the way over too i've actually got quite a few privateers i might have forgotten to purchase another one all right, let's head this over to the Congo to steal his gold. He's got an awful lot of gold. And uh, we'll grab ourselves another spy in here. I know I need to get these online, but, you know, spies are important too. God, I really want to build a commercial hub. But every fiber in my being is, say, focus on the goal. And the goal requires builders. Similarly in here, I should throw down this holy site. I'm not going to build it right away because, again, I should just really, really, really... Focus on builders and spies. In fact, this city can build a spy in a reasonable amount of time. So I'll get a spy in there. Right, a seaside resort worth plus seven gold. Unfortunately, that is another waste of some error score. But that is worth, if I look at this tourism here, it is worth 14 tourism per turn off of a single tile. That is incredibly valuable. Like if you consider here, the Taj Mahal was plus five tourism uh, per turn. Like the, the, the investment level that I'm getting out of some of these seaside resorts is incredible, all thanks to the Cristo uh, Red and Tor. Where the hell did I build it? I built it over here. Right, so we are taking some pretty hefty hits. We've also got a nuclear submarine problem uh, that needs to be dealt with. We can do a little bit of damage to it, but it does an awful lot of damage back to us. And uh, we've also got to deal with some of these units. I can kill that pike and shot in a single hit, but this guy, for example, takes a little bit more work now, he should still fall, but a lot of my frontline units are now in full retreat, which is far from ideal. Archaeologist in here in Halicarnassus will be nice. Taking a look at who I am trading with. I'm not trading with Gorgo, obviously, because I'm at war with her. 
I am trading with Wilhelmina. I'm also trading with Coupe. I'm tr not trading with Hojo. So he would be the most important person that I could establish a trade route with, with regards to trying to win the game. So this city actually can't reach any of his cities. So I might plug someone into Athens just to get a trade route with Hojo to get that extra little bit of tourism against him. We have finally taken the lead at 50 out of 333 uh, tourists per uh domestic or, or, or visiting tourists from other civilizations which is a pretty damn good amount more privateers i mean part of me is tempted to pick up submarines myself but i don't have any oil wait how does gorgo have oil i guess i haven't revealed oil so i can't see if she has it or not it's a good point i didn't think about that right let's keep getting diplomatic visibility with gorgo to hopefully get us that intel on opponents movements that we so deeply crave Wait, I thought I just heard a nuclear missile go off. Wait, what? What was that noise? That was terrifying. What was it the this thing shooting? Pop this guy forward to take a shot at the city. Take a moment to get healed up here. And uh start shooting this nuclear submarine. Doing a little bit of damage to it, but hopefully just kind of preventing it from doing too much damage in return to me. All right, Corinth is now down to about half health, which is good progress. We just need to do as much damage to the Greeks as possible. National History Museum is finished over here in Tarsus. Let's get some great works moved down into here and uh, start filling that one up. Got some artists in reserve ready to go. Unfortunately, that is the end of the science we get from Renaissance walls. We did get a little bit of value out of them, but not an amazing amount. I'm going to plug in satellite broadcasts at a later date. I don't quite have enough great musicians for that just yet. I'm going to plug in expropriation for a few turns, because you know what? I could actually use a settler or two. Uh, in particular, I'd like to get a settler down in over here if I could. I'd like to get two settlers up here for a little bit of extra coastline. And I'm not really seeing anywhere else that it would be a good idea to plug a settler, mainly just those three spots. I plan to replace that card pretty quick, so I figured it may as well get a little bit of value out of it. I need to make sure I have enough money to buy myself a bomber for the next turn. Let's go ahead and harvest this farm as well and put another seaside resort down there. All right, there we go. A nice trade route with uh, Japan. I'm worried about the safety of this particular trade route, however. So I might look for one that goes through more neutral territory. Yeah, this one's a bit safer, I feel. It's kind of out of the way. Although there's a bunch of cities there. I can kind of protect this one. Yeah, I'm just going to go for maximum value. I want to be trading with Japan to get a little bit of extra domestic tourism pressure against him. Preslav is back with a vengeance to cause me more problems. Shouldn't be too hard to keep them at bay, though. I don't have anything really valuable up here that they can really kind of pillage or anything like that. Brilliant. So we are now into the atomic era with our research. Can we purchase a bomber? That is the most important question. We can. They're only 950 gold. That is brilliant. Hopefully we'll be able to get one transferred over to Gnosis. If not, we'll have to get this engineer, military engineer, up here to build an airbase somewhere a little bit closer to Gnosis so we can actually do the, do the transfer. Yeah, just in case I need to do that, I'll get him moving up there already. So like I said, I would have been tempted to grab the submarine or the oil power plant or any mixture of those things, but uh, it's not... Like, I would really like to get computers, but I think it's about time that I swung back here and picked up steel. Uh, for uh, artillery and the Eiffel Tower. I'd also like to pick up refining. I think I'm going to maybe prioritize refining. I think it depends. Like, is there anyone building Eiffel? Oh, I panicked there for a second. Like, wait, who's building Eiffel Tower? And I like went over to this pin and it was my Eiffel Tower. Yeah, you know what, man? I really want this oil. So I tell you what, I'm going to go for oil and then steel. All right, let's do a trade route with Mbanza and Sundi, mainly because this city needs to grow a little bit that I'm going to give it a little bit of food from a trade route. This isn't a terrible spot for a Pyrodiza. Yeah, you know what? We'll plug a Pyrodiza down there, right? We'll get a little bit of extra value from that. Okay, I'm not going to build the first great work with you. These guys all have only one charge left. And I left them with one charge so I could do this specific thing where I just get a whole bunch of great works in the one turn. Because normally if I, if I had to use this guy first, I would have only got one great work this turn. But by doing this, I managed to get three in a single turn, which is a very small optimization. Like, let's be real here. This is a very, very minor optimization. But it is an optimization. And, uh, you know, you got to try to be optimal everywhere you can be. Another seaside resort for me. I'll put a forest here too to um, give it even a little bit more appeal, right? Just try to get as much out of each and every single tile in terms of appeal and uh, tourism as possible. Pop our Quirisir in so that this Bombard has vision of the city. Take another shot. We'll go ahead and take out this cavalry unit as well. 
Very, very nice. And now that we have revealed the city, done a bit of damage to it, we'll just run immediately backwards with our Quirus here. City should flip independent, which sucks. But there's Broadway, plus 20% culture in the city and a free random atomic era civic boost. Hey, finished a theater square with plus four adjacency or higher, plus three adjacency or higher. And we got Broadway. Now we're making 90, oh my God, we're making nearly 700 culture per turn. That's kind of absurd actually. So it's only me and Greece of all people who are in golden ages. Of course, Greece would be in a golden age. Anyway, um, reform the coinage would be nice. I'm going to take two arms again because military production is always nice. Let's go ahead and take some shots on the city. The city is the most important thing to fall. Make sure we take and retake the city over and over again. There we go. Retook the city. Still having even more loyalty problems. Really, I just I just need to break. Um, I just need to break Corinth, and it'll be fine. If I can, if I can break Corinth, I I know it's all going to be just just fine. But you know the hard part is actually doing that. Another musician. It's about time I start thinking about getting up some of these um, uh, broadcast centers. But again, like they, these things are just hard to pass up. Stuff like the Bolshoi Theater, stuff like the Sydney Opera House, um, the Statue of Liberty. I think I think I'm going to prioritize the Sydney Opera House here. Take 22 turns, but I'd say good 22 turns. All right, so we got ourselves an aquarium that's starting to help out with amenities in at least a few of these cities. Let's get ourselves an aquatic center as well. This will give us a little bit of uh, amenities hopefully in the local area builder finished in here now ideally i would be plugging in a seaside resort here but what really needs to happen is a paradisa needs to get placed there first and then maybe seaside resorts can go in here right i would like to get this broadcast center up there's so many things that i want it's really hard to prioritize yeah i'm gonna go for the shopping mall first just because i'm having an amenity problem All right first settler out as a rank is done let's get the second one and send this one up to this spot, right? This is the one that gives me a decent amount of um, a decent amount of tourism tiles. Got another builder in here. Time to start, you know, chopping and changing these tiles. I will get myself a seaside uh, a ski resort rather first, though. I think I'm going to need a second builder in here. Unfortunately, as much as I would love to be building other stuff, let's get to work in an amphitheater. Now, the one saving grace we do have with this war is we have a bomber that can rebase all the way to Gnosis and the bomber will do crazy amounts of damage. You just wait until you see how much damage this bomber does. So this would be worth plus six production now that we've finished the aqueduct. I think though I would much rather get to work on a Petra for example. It will cover up this tile but more importantly the Petra actually when it's finished will provide a bit of tourism. Another amphitheater here in Shahiri Quimis will be getting a good few more of these um, arch archaeologists soon. Man, I really, really want this um, great merchant. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it, though. Yeah, I really just didn't build any commercial hubs at all whatsoever. So, man, as much as I want him, I'm just going to have to skip out on him and suffer a slower victory. Now that we have Broadway, we can get a couple more great works of music on the go, which I'm pretty excited about. I think I can only put a few in here, right? Yeah, you can put two great works of music and a great work of uh, writing in there. So let's pop you back in there, create another great work. We've got quite a few bits of musician work going on and we can fit in one of those as well. Just saw another submarine pop out of that city there, which is a bit concerning, but let's go ahead and get rid of him. Um, let's pop you forward into this position. Let's do a little bit of preliminary um, scouting for those subs. Okay, I didn't find them. Doesn't mean they're not there. I just saw the submarine pop out of this district. It might be a good idea to pillage this district. Anyway, let's go ahead and get the bomber to air attack this city. You can see the bomber does significantly more damage than anything else. So that's a really good, helpful thing to do in the late games. If you're having trouble breaking a city, just break out the bombers, you know? Let's go ahead and take incendiaries on this field cannon army. And we'll keep healing up these units in the back because I'm a little bit scared to go too far forward with them. All right, the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Excellent. So I picked up another great writer. Go ahead and pop him into this city and move these great works away to Zranka. And then start creating a few more. Another spy finished in Pella. Who is my other opponent in culture? I think it really is just the Congo. So I'm going to send another a spy over to the Congo to start stealing some of his stuff. I think he's got a bit of culture going on here. Yeah, you've got like uh, Eugene Onigan. So I might do a bit of money stealing and then kind of transition into uh, great work stealing as well. 
Speaking of what I can do in this city, I think a broadcast center in here wouldn't be a miss. Although, you know, builders, 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 builders. All would be wonderful things if I could pick them up. Let's just get the broadcast center. We can get it in four turns. Another Paradisa for Gordian. Um, it's not about time that we did anything. I think I'll just get the coal power plant in here. Another forest in here. Kind of messed up the tile yields uh, from a visual standpoint. But what it didn't do is mess up the tourism generation. So from these tiles alone, we're getting 16 tourism per turn. That's raw tourism before it gets modified through all the modifiers you get once you have trade routes with people. We're up to 61 tourists now. That's making great progress on the whole tourism victory thing. Another little Pyradiza popped down on this tile. We can finally start to clean up some of these pins. There's still a few of these pins hanging around from very early on in the other episodes that I set up all these pins, but they, they got to be replaced. And this is, this is where the whole pin system is so handy. I really do feel like Civilization VI has introduced a lot of mechanics that if they weren't in future games, I would actually be deeply disappointed. Like stuff like the pins and, and other stuff like that. I think I'm going to replace this forest with a Paradisa as well. Even though it's not a very good Paradisa, I could put one here and then maybe some seaside resorts along the coast as well. Can't fit a seaside resort here, but I can't put one here either. And I can put one there. I need a little bit more tile appeal along here. I could maybe remove the, um, the mine here and that might do the trick. It would certainly do the trick for this tile, but I would need to put a forest here as well. On the other hand, I would like to maybe get like entertainment districts and stuff out. But, you know, these are all long term goals. All right, there is social media. So we're going to do a big retooling of our government here. Um, definitely want five year plan and public works. Although this one kind of falls off in usefulness as time goes on and I need less builder charges. Definitely want heritage tourism. Expropriation can be pulled out now. That one is not important. Online communities for sure is incredibly important as a satellite broadcasts so i think man as much as i don't want to give up public works i really don't want to give up new deal because it's a lot of housing and amenities i think i'm just going to give up public works and eat the um builder charge thing uh, i don't have that many uh city states that i'm suzerain of but these multipliers are incredibly powerful i'm going to show you this i'm at 782 culture right now so you'll see in a second just how powerful they are and i'm going to also plug in containment so any envoys i do spend will be worth more so just from confirming that government i got an extra 20 percent culture which brought me up to 902 culture per turn which is an absurd amount of culture to be generating let's have a look around i've got seven envoys i don't want to spend too many but if i could pick up any uh leaderships cheaply like zanzibar for example for a single envoy. Bologna would be nice to pick up as well. I could probably get them with three envoys. There we go. So we got two extra suzerainties and we're almost making a thousand signs per turn or uh, culture per turn. Sorry, excuse me. All right, time to pick up environmentalism because that's going to give me a 25% boost to all of my tourism generation. Another great work of writing the adventures of Tom Sawyer. Brilliant. No more room for great works of music, but I will get you running down here towards this place where I'll be able to build another one. Keep on harvesting to place down more Pyradizas. Pyradiza for you. And I would love to build a piece of railway here like so railway goes all the way from the capital city snaking its way down to agii coming down to push Kilaveti, swinging its way back up to sparta not a very interconnected empire but i'm slowly connecting things up and i'll be able to move builders around my empire quite easily go ahead and chop that there to be able to get another um pirates are there right i'd love to steal gold straight away but i do need to gain sources before i start stealing from the congo time to do a little bit of bombing on corinth and now the bomber will do massive amounts of damage which is exactly what we want go ahead and do the final little bit of damage i don't think i have a unit oh there we go we can take the city oh no i can't we'll be able to take it next turn so i'm not in any sort of rush but we may as well do a little bit of extra damage get a little bit of experience on these guys as we go excellent so we picked up that city let's go ahead and grab ourselves another unit in here I'm trying to think what could i use i guess another musketman wouldn't go amiss to be able to combine with this one over here and have just a slightly stronger unit to run around so now that we have this airplane i'm going to want a second one because we're about to have a second place to station an air airplane which is going to be a pretty big deal and we'll be able to take down these cities much quicker with these late game aircraft. Mission was successful in the city of Sparta and the spy was undetected. Let's keep running this mission. Oh my god, that's a nuclear submarine. How do you have uranium? Good god. 
All right, I need to like do as much damage to this thing as humanly possible. Uh, can I get some of these field cannons in range? First, let's go ahead and take the city first. That's probably the most important thing. All right, city is mine. Let's go ahead and grab Amani, who I recently just picked up and kind of threw her in a city and plug her into Corinth. Let's say we make sure we keep the city. So now we've got full loyalty in this city. And we have a little bit less loyalty in here, but that doesn't matter. As long as the city is reasonably being kept in, in my sort of loyalty uh, umbrella, I'm happy. Let's go park you over here. You're still healing up. Aircraft, let's do an air attack. Um, we could start pillaging some districts and stuff like that, but I guess we could just do damage to the capital. If we can get the capital snatched up, that'll do an awful lot of damage to their empire. Grab ourselves another spy. Let's find another city to plug in there in Mbanza Nasundi. Broadcast center as well. And we'll start ripping up. Although, you know, builders, builders, builders. I need so many builders because I don't have the builder charge card locked in. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. Ooh, I'm kind of torn between the Paradisa and the Seaside Resort. Oh, that's a really tough choice now. And that might actually change how I do things. Because technically the Seaside Resort is actually worth quite a bit more tourism. Especially if I can get another Seaside Resort right there. Um, that would work out very well for me. I don't think that changes much other in terms of what I do. I might replace this um, rainforest with a um, with a paradisa and kind of change my lattice. Although I might just replace it with a lumber mill. Pop a lumber mill down on this tile. May as well get maximum value out of the tiles that we have. Paradisa right here. Beautiful. I guess we could do a little bit of damage to this nuclear submarine. We won't be able to kill it though. It's a bit of a problem. Japan is having a bit of trouble over here holding off the Greeks. Right, time to teleport my secondary spy over to a different city. Since I, I wasn't planning on taking Sparta so quickly, I was hoping to get another mission out there. I think I'll probably teleport them over to some other city like this one over here. Although, yeah, that one I can steal a bit of cash from. We are hurting their culture per turn, but we need to kill this main city of Sparta. We need to kill these core cities, basically. If we can kill these core cities, their, um, their culture per turn will be significantly diminished. Well, I guess Greece just handed me a free settler in a bit of a weird move. Not going to complain about that one yet. Go ahead and bomb Sparta again. Next turn, we should be able to get units in position to start doing significant damage. We'll get another bombard moving on down here with all these units. Oh, I found a nuclear submarine. Uh, of course it would be over here causing trouble for my Japanese ally. Well, let's go ahead and help them out there. Right, so we'll be handling all this sort of stuff over the next couple of turns. Let's keep guys moving. I feel like the game lies to me about where people can move sometimes. And it's, uh, it's a little bit aggravating, but I'm not going to get too hung up on it. Uh, probably a good idea actually to come in over here and get myself a second bomber to send over to the front line to help just clean up this thing a little bit. Right, Sahir Ecumis, I would like to get an archaeological museum. It will take 10 turns, but uh, you know, 10 turns is better than uh, forever. And I mean, it takes a while, but you do get them eventually. Now, as much as I would love to get this holy site built in here, I think it's actually far better to put an, enter uh, an entertainment complex right there on this tile. And the reason being that this will also provide amenities and adjacency and all that wonderful stuff that we need for a tourism victory. So I think it's a mistake to put this Pyrodiza here actually. And the reason being is I could potentially get um, quite a bit higher, um, what's the word, seaside resorts in here. If I do this arrangement instead, I put a seaside resort here and a seaside resort here and then put two Paradisas sort of um, flanking the seaside resorts i could get much better results than the current original plan and then i just pop in some lumber mills on these two tiles on forests ideally and this would net me two pretty damn good seaside resorts i would think i <sighs> can't quite place the seaside resort here i need to get rid of this mine settle a city right in here and uh, we'll get to work on improving this stuff pretty much the very first thing we're going to want in here is a water park district here to get a hold of all this I have, ideally I would want to buy a bunch of these tiles, but it's going to be a bit expensive uh, at the current rate. Uh, I'll tell you what, Japan, do you have any income that I could maybe steal from you in the form of diplomatic favor trades? They give me about 146 gold per turn for that much diplo favor. How much gold per turn have you got left? I'll tell you what, what if I gave you about 25? There you go, wonderful. It's a whole bunch of money in my pocket now that'll make doing this sort of purchasing a little bit more justifiable. Oh, we just broke the 1000 culture per turn mark, which I'm very extremely happy about. Mega colossal eruption over here, fertilizing seven tiles, damaging six and killing three population. 
very much so not ideal. Um, <laughs> a lot of districts just got absolutely obliterated, which, you know, is not what I wanted. Also, my game is starting to bug out a bit with tile yields. Pretty normal stuff, I gotta say. Let's go ahead and get ourselves another great work of music in here now that we've built the broadcast center. Very, very nice. Oh, goodness gracious. I never built walls in this city. I need to get those up ASAP. I think I've basically built ancient walls, medieval walls and renaissance walls essentially everywhere in my empire. The latest cities that I'm getting, there's no way I'm going to get them in time for uh, steel. But definitely down here in Pella, I could grab them. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab this bomber and rebase it over to Corinth. And then we'll go ahead and continue the war on Greece in the next episode. I love you all very much. Hope you guys are enjoying this series and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.